rolling with today. No matter how much you have, what we need when we are going through a test, through a battle, we need an encouraging word from the Lord. We need to feel close to a God that we know is powerful and will never leave us. Oh, I said God will. I said God will take care of you. All you have to do is just praise him and God will show up. Praise him, and God will make a visitation. If you praise him, he'll turn a situation around. If you praise him, he'll make a way out of no way. Because there's a miracle in praise. There's deliverance in praise. There's victory in praise. There's healing in praise. I want somebody to say, I'm gonna praise the Lord and I'm coming out of this rut. Everybody in the chat room, I want you to talk, I'm on my way out. I'm on my way out. Continue to stand, Psalms number 23, the 23rd Psalm, verse number 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thou staff, they comfort me. Since we know that so well, can I get you to say that along with me, please? Yea, though I walk. Through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. All right. Amen. Amen. I like that. Our subject today, making it through the valleys of life. Make it through the valleys of life. One of my favorite characters in the Bible was David. He was able to put into words some of his innermost thoughts. And these thoughts have guided untold millions of people through the valley of painful experiences in life. Amen. As he wrote the 23rd Psalm, where he talks about the valley of the shadows of death, I used to think that it was just a figure of speech. Amen. But I had a unique learning experience. While some years ago, 
we were touring in Israel. And when the guides get to know you, they're more willing to show you some extra things on the tour. Since we had been there and the guides knew us, one day he decided to show us something that I was not expecting. He said to his driver, drive up on this incline. And he drove. And he said, I want you to get a good view of the mountain in front of us. He said, look hard. You will see a narrow ledge. And we looked. And he said, that ledge is called the valley of the shadow of death. I said to him, I did not know that that was really a place. And it was so narrow that if you made one awkward step, you could fall to your death. Amen. It made clear to me something that I had never understood before. And it became clear that life can take you through some dangerous physical valleys as well as some spiritual valleys. And either one or both can destroy you if you are not determined to make it through the valleys in life. Amen. A few years later, and you know I've done a lot of traveling, I was leaving Asheville, North Carolina. Those of you know where Asheville is. There are mountains around it. And I had an experience. But when I left Asheville, North Carolina, and I was on my way to Terre Haute, Indiana, it was nighttime and it was in the winter. The highway was narrow, and if I made one awkward turn on the steering wheel, I could end up falling hundreds of feet down the mountainside. And to make it more scary, and dangerous. There were 18 wheelers that were throwing mud from the snow in the highway and it was falling on my windshield. I became frightened at first, but I knew I could not stop nor could I pull over and rest. And just as fear began to overtake me, this 23rd Psalm came into my mind. And it was reminding me that I did not have to fear because God was with me. 
Amen. This whole episode taught me a valuable lesson. And that is when God is with you, you don't have to fear. I was so happy when I got on the other side of that mountain and I had to stop and go to the bathroom. <laughs> you would have been there, you would have wanted to do it too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Don't get me wrong. Even when the Lord is on your side, it was scary. Has anybody here ever been through some scary situations? And then you know that the only way you got through was that the Lord was on your side. Amen. There's also a spiritual element in this 23rd Psalm. And that is when sometimes our relationship with God suffers when we are dealing with emotional issues. And David was keenly aware that the presence of God was in his life. Amen. And even though he was said to have been after God's own heart, there were many things that made him know that God was with him. As I look back into his life, when Israel had a mortal enemy by the name of Goliath, whenever, and the way they would fight wars and wars in that day, was that you would get your strongest man. Each country would get its strongest man. They would fight each other. And the one that won the fight was the winner for the nation. Goliath was such a big brute. You would see him and everybody would run from him. And he was brag. Isn't there anybody in Israel bad enough to fight me? And David showed up and said to his brothers, what is this? All you cowards, because they were just trembling. Why won't one of y'all go out there and fight the man? No, we ain't gonna bother Goliath. I'll tell you what, I'll fight it. And he went to the king and said, let me fight him. I think his brother said, boy, you better shut up. You don't know Goliath. He said, I ain't scared. The king could not change his mind. So he said, at least you ought to put on some armor. They tried the armor, but it was too big for David. David, what you gonna fight it with? My slingshot. With what? My slingshot. 
you asking for it. What makes you think that you could beat a giant like Goliath? David said one day, a lion attacked me and I killed him. And then there was a bear that wanted to kill me and I killed him. And with our God on my side, I'll take care of Goliath. David was well aware of the fact that life could bring you to some valleys. David became an instant hero and Saul, the king of Israel, when he heard how the women were praising David over him and he became afraid. He became jealous. And jealousy can make you do some crazy things. I wish I had a witness in here. Y'all trying to act like ain't nobody jealous in your life. Amen. Saul got so jealous that he wanted to kill David. And ironically, Saul's son, Jonathan, he and David were so close that Jonathan wanted David to know that I will stand by you and I will not let my father kill you. I know it made David feel good to know your friend who had a friend like that. But he said, let not Jonathan know this, that as surely as the Lord liveth, there is but one step between me and death. He knew that regardless of who is on your side, Come on, somebody. If God is with you, then they can't do you any harm. Another occasion in his life, when he and his men had been off fighting a battle, and when they returned triumphantly back home, the enemy had come in, burned their homes down, took their families with them. And the Bible says they cried so hard that there was not enough energy in them to cry anymore. These big old grown men were able to fight a battle, but they could not stand to lose their families. And then after the tears, they began to get angry. And they said, this is all David's fault. We are the stone and kill him. And it was such a crisis that I know that David needed somebody to console him. 
Have you ever been in a place but nobody was saying anything good to you? And you had to console yourself. That's what the Bible says. And nobody comforted him. And he had to encourage himself. There will come times in your life that you will be wishing and hoping for somebody to console you. But just in case you can't find anybody, you ought to be able to console yourself. Encourage yourself. Amen, somebody. Even though he knew that God was on his side, he still did some things that displeased God. But he seemed to know that God's love for him was deep enough to help him to make it through even his personal shortcomings. Aren't you glad to know that when you come short of the glory of God, that God doesn't turn on you. That God doesn't kick you out. I don't know about you, but I'm glad. Because knowing how good God is, and how good God has been to me, yet there are times I find myself coming short. David knew that while Going through life's challenges, he did not have to worry. Why? Because he knew that as the, right, the, the New Testament writer said, Amen, that God has said that I will never leave you, nor forsake you that you may boldly say the Lord is my helper and I shall not fear what man shall do unto me amen he knew that somewhere the child of God will have to face some evil deeds and people being against him. But he only had to say, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou are with me. If there's something I've learned, it is the fact that there are some shadows of death experiences will come in everybody's life. Amen. Deadly automobile accidents drive by shootings and so many young men now don't care anything about somebody else's life and they will kill you as fast as they can kill a roach and won't be anything to them and be proud of it 
But yet, if David could stand here today, he would say to you, whatever dangers you may have to face, if you love the Lord, you are assured that God is still with you. Some of us are saying, how can God be with me with all of these things I'm going through? Come on, somebody. There are some valley experiences that some of you are going through right now. And I'm afraid some of us will be lost in the valley. Some of us will get to the point that you will say it's not worth it for me to try to live right. It's not worth it to serve God. Look like God would give me a break. And yet, it seems like God is not hearing us pray. Can I get a witness here? You will go to some valleys. Amen. And I'm grateful today that God has called me to be a messenger of hope to children of God who have to go through the valleys of sickness. Some of you are sick now. And the news hasn't been good. Some of you lost the person that meant most to you in your life. And despite your prayers, they died anyhow. Some have lost your jobs. Some have lost your relationships and your homes broke up. And many of us going through depression. Amen. And sometimes when I see people in pain and I know that the words that I say will not heal the wounds in their hearts. Amen. But it's good for them to know that they can come to the pastor and because of a pastor's heart that he cares for me too. Amen. I heard a preacher say the other week when he was talking about Superman. Amen. Who could bend steel. Who could climb over buildings. He could do just about it and change the course of mighty rivers. Y'all remember him, don't you? Superman. But what this preacher said was that he could not stay Superman always. He had to go back to being Clark Kent. That said to me 
that sometimes when I have been able to help people have a little more strength and courage and faith in their lives, when I get through, I have to put back on my Clark Kent clothes. This past week, when I've been rejoicing over what I thought was great news, that we were nearing the end of COVID-19. Amen. I was praising God because we've gone back in the building. And the commentator said parenthetically, now that COVID-19 seems to be under control, there's another virus called the Delta virus and is more transmissible, more dangerous than COVID-19. When I heard them say that, it knocked me back down in my Clark Kent clothes. I said, you mean I got to go through this again? And I thought of the nights that Lorraine and I have sat and cried, me leaning on her, she leaning on me, because so many of our loved ones in this church, some I've shared with over 40 years, and they went and left us. And then I thought about Sister Jackie James, a member of this choir. She had a niece that was run over by a car, killed her instantly. And the sister had to come by and see her mama lying dead. And she said, Pastor, can you give us some encouragement? And I called. And I let her know that if you need me, we're going to be right there. And after the phone call ended, I sank deeper into my Clark Kent's clothes. And you know when you get depressed, you start thinking about the loved ones you've lost, You start thinking about all of the trouble that you've been through. And I can be transparent enough to tell you, I got depressed. And I started thinking about my own personal illnesses things that I've gone through in my later life that I never had to go through with as a young person. 
And don't be looking at me strange. Because some of you are going through the same thing. Now don't tell anybody, I'm scared something's going to happen to Pastor White. No. The Lord is able to help me to bring into completion the things that he has placed in my hands. But even at that, sometimes you get depressed. I wish I had a witness here. I started thinking about less than two years ago. They said, you got to have an operation. Amen. And when I was to have that operation, it was my thyroid. And some of you might know what that's like. It is through the thyroid, every action in the rest of your body depends on it. And somebody told me, you'll never be able to preach again. I thought about a friend minister of mine who had the act, who had the operation and couldn't speak for five years. And I said, Lord, what are you doing? And I just kept on painfully thinking. And I want to tell you this, sometimes what you've been through will cause you to think painfully about what's going on in your life. Y'all might have quiet in here. As a person next to you, you're not asleep, are you? And the Lord then allowed me to think about some of my weaknesses. And the old enemy said to me, maybe the Lord is going to leave you now because you know you haven't been all right. Amen. And I started thinking about my past and all this week I prayed to the Lord I know you're trying to give me a message to give your people but why you got to do it this way and the Lord said to me because I want them to know that you don't have any special power you have to go through like everybody else Amen. So I thought I would give you some symptoms of depression because some of us are going through depression and don't even know it. Number one, you start thinking painfully about things in your past. The heartbreak that you went through. And even though you've come through it, you, you think about it, and you wonder, what did I do to make this race so hard to run? And then you start thinking about, prematurely, your death. You start wondering, Lord, am I about to die? And you get away from it, but the next day or two, that fear comes up again. Am I about to die? That is a symptom of depression. Then you get to the point that you don't want to be bothered with anybody, 
even the one that's closest to you. you. You get mad, you see them coming. Amen. You don't want to talk to anybody. You start staying in a dark room. You don't even turn the light on. And then you start losing interest in the way you dress. Come on, somebody. People have known you to always be meticulously dressed. Oh, I like the way I said that. You had every hair in place. There was not a wrinkle in your dress or suit. And you even walk in a small strut. But now, it seems like I don't want to get dressed. And you come out with your hair hanging, standing up on your head. And that same dress you've been wearing for a whole week. Everybody know you got more clothes, but you don't want to get into them. Preach white. I don't care what they think. This is the way I feel right now. And some of you are depressed. Don't get disturbed. Jesus got depressed. When he lost his friend Lazarus, Jesus ended up at his grave and Jesus wept. On another occasion, when Jesus looked out on the city of Jerusalem and said, Oh, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, how often would I have gathered you under my wings and you wouldn't listen to me? And I will not come back to you again till you say, Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Sometimes you can get so depressed that without knowing it, tears will begin to come from your face. Some of you see, have heard me say, macho men and tears don't mix. Because when I was coming in the house as a child, mama looked at me and said when I was crying, wait a minute, you're mama's man. You don't cry. And many of us have grown up men thinking that if you cry, you're weak. But tears are not a sign of weakness. They are signs of pain. Are you all listening to me? The question is, what do you do? when you're depressed. Number one, learn how to share your pain with somebody who wishes you well. Now don't you run out there and tell your enemies. 
You better be glad that God can show you somebody that you know who really loves you. Listen, I might just talk to you today. Do you know why when you can meet some people and in about 20 minutes or half an hour you know their whole life story? They have been wishing for somebody to talk to. But because they know you are a stranger, they tell you everything because they know they won't see you no more. I'll tell you something else. Some people go to funerals and cry and it has nothing to do with the person down here. But at least they can come and cry and people won't think something wrong with them. There has to be a time that you can admit that you're hurting. And there has to be a time that you can share your pain. During these years of my ministry, I have sat by bedsides of people who were dying. And they shared some things that they never had told anybody. I've learned something else in this sermon is not going like it did earlier this morning. I've learned something else. I've taken an informal way of trying to figure things out for people who sometimes die too young. And I have come to the conclusion that those of us who are angry and bitter and cannot share our pain, it stays right inside. Now, it doesn't just stay there and do no harm. It's either you're going to be healed or it will turn into a cancer. And there are ways that pain has a way of affecting your physical body. Amen. And that's why it's good to be able to share some pain. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I woke up early one morning, a week or two ago. And Lorraine said, what's wrong with you? I couldn't look at her. But before I knew it, my tears started coming. I didn't know how the pain of so many of my members I, that I hadn't gotten over. And I had to just tell her I'm hurting. And I've learned that God allows you to go through experiences to help somebody else when you see them going through the same things. 
She couldn't stop my pain, but I sure felt better. What am I saying to you? Sometimes you got to break down and you got to let the Lord deal with you. Share your pain. Come out of that dark room. You've been going in there. You don't even want the light on in the top of the building. And you get in that bed and you cover up and you want to go just sleep away. And the enemy is glad to see you that way. Because he's saying to you, now you see that? You've been running around telling people that God loves you. If God loves you, why are you letting you go through this now? And if you don't mind, the devil will cause you to be even more depressed. Preach white. I know some of y'all trying to act like you sleep because you ain't saying a word. But let the redeemed of the Lord say so. When you come out of the darkness, you got to understand that there is a tendency for your depression to deplete chemicals in your system. That's why when you go to the psychiatrist and they give you what they call antidepressants. That's a synthetic medicine. That's something that man made. It is meant to re replenish in you those chemicals that depression have taken out of you. You take them, but and you don't feel quite so bad, but you still don't feel like yourself. You know why? Doctors often treat symptoms and not the root of the problem. If you learn how to get the root out, the symptoms will go away. The next thing, make sure you are getting your vitamins. It is a fact that most African Americans are deficient in vitamin D. Not B, but D like dog. Amen. And that is one of the vitamins that when you're not getting it, you start feeling dumb, dragged out. That's why some of y'all go get to the doctor get a vitamin B complex shot. Call the energy. It's not there. Preach right. Why is it that way? That's because many of us do not recognize the fact that the sun has a love affair with the pineal gland in your head. Have you ever stepped outside and the sun is shining? You say, ooh, sure feels good out here. The sun is responding to your pineal gland. If you can't do it, you take your vitamins. I'm going to tell myself amen here. And then... Don't stop praying. You can get to the point in your life 
that you just don't want to pray. All the praying I've done, it didn't help me. I know ain't nothing me and me talking to Pastor Wacko, he's going to tell me to pray. I don't want to hear it. But let me tell you this. The only way that you can talk to God is through prayer. And the most powerful thing that you have in your arsenal against sin, Satan, the devil, and depression is the name of Jesus. Prayer involves the whole Godhead, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That when you pray to God, don't pray in your name because your name ain't no good. All the time you messed up. That's why you have to pray in the name of somebody who has not messed up. Pray in the name of Jesus by the aid of the Holy Spirit. I'm trying to teach y'all something up here today. And when you pray, don't start trying to argue at God. Why haven't you come to see about me? Do you know how the best way for you to get in touch with God? You got to praise him first. I said earlier today. When your husband or your wife or your girlfriend or your whatever, when they are angry with you, praise them. I want you to try this. Y'all might have been arguing when you left home, but praise them. Sometime I'm around the house. And I'm not quite hitting on eight cylinders with Lorraine. I might be on five, but not eight. But when I get dressed, to get ready to go somewhere, I walk out, and she say, Woo, you are one handsome man. All right, now. I say, <laughs> Whether she means it or not, she just put an antidote into my anger. And I can't stay mad with her if she keeps on complimenting me. She knows it. She knows it. What to say, when to say it. Sometimes I be determined I ain't going to be pleased. And she says, I act like I ain't pleased. But on the inside, I'm melting. When I leave, I said, baby, you want me to bring you anything? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to help somebody in here. If you get mad and upset with your wife, your girlfriend, or your significant other, if you want her to respond, in a positive way, compliment her. Tell her that even though there's a little more of you there now than you were when we got married, you still are the best thing that ever happened to me. Talk to me somebody. She's already been concerned about whether, what do you think, because she hadn't gotten rid of the, all of that excess weight. What do you think? She's still attractive? Yeah, oh, mama, when you walk out of that room today, I felt like 
I did when I first met you. Listen, you gonna get a good meal that night? <laughs> and some other things. Well, anyway. <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody. Now you've been going through some trouble in your life. And you've been going through a long time. To the point that some of us are just angry with God. And let me tell you, that God ain't scared of you? You can't change God because you angry. If you want God to respond to you in a positive way, praise him. I'm trying to give you the secret. Just praise him. Lord, I don't understand what you're doing, but I know that you never left me yet. Yea, though I'm walking, through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because I know you are still with me. How do I know he's still with me? Because everything I've been through, come on somebody, he's been right there. When I was in trouble, he brought me out. When I was broke, you made it away. And now when I look back over my life, I can't stay angry with God because God been better to me than I've been to myself. And when you begin to praise God, God will smile on you. And when God smiles on you, he got a blessing angel and tell that blessing angel to stop by your house and be a special blessing in your life. What the Lord has told me to tell you today that what's going on in your life is not the end of you. Did you hear me? Some things you got to go through. If you didn't go through what you're going through, you wouldn't know that God is able to carry you through. Can I get a witness here? The Lord told me to tell you today, hold on a little while longer. Help is on the way. Don't just look at your situation. Praise him for what he already brought you through. Praise him for what he's doing for you right now. Praise him for what he's about to do in your life because weeping may endure for a night but joy is coming in the morning I've been here trying to tell you what the Lord will do some of you are looking at me and won't even say a word. You must don't know like I know what the Lord has done for you. Somebody 
ought to be shouting right now telling the Lord Lord I thank you for what you've done in my life Lord I thank you for making a way for me and I found out the more you praise it the more you stop thinking about your own situation praise him for where it brought you from praise him for how he kept you praise him because he never left you the more you praise him the more he's gonna bless you I don't know about you but I want to tell him right now thank you You, 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 you Been so good to me And I tell you something else And we know Did you hear me? And we know That all things Work together For the good To those who love the Lord Keep on Holding on is working for your good. Keep on praising God. It's working it out. If you miss somebody, tell them he's working it out in your life. Somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to praise him. I don't know about you, but when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all he's done for me, my soul, my soul cries out, hallelujah, I thank the Lord for saving me when I was young yellow you know, when I listened to the secular song I would like one of the singers said I would get on my good foot and then well since I've been saved I'm still dancing but I changed partners when you see me dancing, I'm praising the Lord. When you see me clapping my hands, I'm praising the Lord. If the Lord been good to you, go on and praise him. Glory! Glory! Hey! Glory! Can anybody feel him right now? Tell him thank you. Most of all, I want to thank him because I was on my way to a devil's head. But one Friday, they stretched him wide. They hung him high for you and me. He hung his head and died. But that's not the end of the story. Early! I said, early! One Sunday morning, he got up from the grave, saying, all power, all power, is in my hand and that's why I praise him even when I 
don't want to get out of depression, but I can't help it. That's why I want to tell you, if you hear me, and it seems like I'm not myself, I'm not about to leave you. Because God is able to bring into completion the thing that he assigned in my hands to do. But just tell somebody what he's doing is praising the Lord because he's leaning on something. Weeping may endure for a night. The joy is coming in the morning. You ought to tell somebody joy is coming in the morning.
blessing me.